September 15, 1944, the Apennine Mountains, Italy. The Italian front had become a slow, punishing crawl. Every ridge, every ravine cost blood. Ahead of Corporal Frank Shorty Kowalski, U.S. Army engineers, the mountains rose like a wall, the last shield of the German 10th Army. German Major Hans Joachim Rikoff had once said, These mountains are absolute. The Americans will break themselves on the roads we've fortified. But Major General Lucian Truscott needed something more than force. He needed imagination. He needed audacity. And that burden fell onto soldiers like Shorty, men who rarely fired rifles, yet risked their lives all the same. Shorty's unit wasn't here to clear mines. They were here to erase the mountain's lifeline itself. Working under sniper fire, they buried nearly two tons of explosives deep into the fractures of the Radicosa. Pass each charge placed by hand, each placement a gamble with death. Shorty spliced the detonator cord with shaking fingers, knowing a single mistake could kill his entire team. October 2nd, 1944, Radicosa Pass. Sergeant Mike O'Brien called out the words every engineer knows too well. Fire in the hole. A heartbeat. Then the world tore open. The mountain didn't just collapse, it roared as if wounded. Hundreds of thousands of tons of limestone sheared away in a single, catastrophic fall. When the dust settled, the road was gone. Not damaged, gone. A 400-foot void where the lifeline of the German counterattack once lay. Three miles away, Major Rikoff received the report. Sir, the pass hasn't been blocked. It no longer exists. For a moment. Even he, an officer hardened by years of war, felt the weight of what that meant. Not just a tactical loss, but a shattering of certainty. If even the mountains were no longer safe, what was? The collapse of Radicosa, Futa, and the adjoining tracks crippled every planned German response. The mobility they relied on evaporated in an instant, but victory came at a cost. American engineers had worked for weeks on exposed slopes, and not all of them went home. Their names now rest quietly on marble walls, men who never carried glory, only tools and courage. Corporal Frank Kowalski didn't just destroy a pass. He changed the shape of a mountain. And like every soldier on that front, American or German, he reminded, the world that war does not reshape land alone. It reshapes the people who survive it.